Okay, this is 6.6 .6. again. We're still in day two. And on this video, we're going to talk about division. So we are looking at this notation now, the division of functions. We're going to take two functions, f of x and g of x. We're going to divide them. In this case, f will go on top and g will go on the bottom. Or we're going to make it look like this, f of x divided by g of x, where again, f is on the top and g is on the bottom. Okay, so again, my steps in how to divide functions. To divide functions, you simply put each function into the fraction, and then you simplify it. Now, some of these things you may have to factor in order to do so. Now, what do I mean by factor? Let's do a little quicker review. What happens if I have like 4a plus 4? Well, when I factor this, I could take out a 4. And then I would be left with an A and a plus 1. Okay? Or, in some cases, you could get uh, a trinomial. This won't happen very often. Um, X squared plus uh, 7X and plus 10. So I need factors of 10 that add to 7. Remember? So that's 5 and 2. And because a is 1, remember this is x plus 5 and x plus 2. So you may have to do a little bit of factoring. Or maybe you have something like this. 3a squared plus 5a. What's the biggest number that goes into 3 and 5? Well, there isn't one. But they both have an a, so I'm going to take out an a, and I'm left with a 3a and a plus 5 if I take an a away from everything. So you may have to do some, some simple... Um, factoring in order to get things to cancel on top and bottom. Remember, in fraction, if I have the same thing on the top and on the bottom, they cancel each other out. Right? Whether it be numbers or whether it be letters. Okay, so those things will cancel. Again, we're not worried about the third step here on this because we're not going to do any domain things with this. Okay, so now let's look at some examples. All right, so I got two examples again. One where you just write it as a fraction. The second one, we're actually going to put a number in when we get to simplifying. Okay, so first thing we're going to look at here, okay, is number three. So on number three, we want to take g of x and divide it by, or excuse me, g of a and divide it by f of a. So what that tells me is g is going to go on top of the fraction, f is going to go on the bottom. So g is 3a on the top, and on the bottom I have an a squared minus 2a. Okay, now, once I get to this point, I'm looking to see, okay, is there anything that I can factor? Well, if I look at the top here, can I do anything to factor here? No, it's a single term item, I can't do anything. Down here, you'll notice these both have a's. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take an a away. So, I'm going to make this 3a over, if I take an a away, that leaves 1a there and minus a 2. And you'll notice since I separated the a away from the other 2, this guy is out on its own now, I can cross out these a's. Now again, this doesn't happen very often in the problems you're going to look at, but I'm left with a 3 on the top and I'm left with an a minus 2 on the bottom. That is my simplified answer. Okay, so you do have to be careful. I gave you one specifically for factoring so you can see what it looks like there. Not every problem will factor. Sometimes you'll just write one on top, one on bottom, and you're done. So sometimes division's not so bad. Okay, so let's look at number four now on this example. Okay, we've got f of x is x cubed minus 5x, and g of x is 3x plus 2. I want to take f, I want to divide it by g, and then I want to plug in negative 2. So f is going to go on top, x cubed minus 5x, and then 3x plus 2 goes on the bottom. Now, on these types of problems where you're substituting a number in, you don't need to worry about factoring at all. Once I have my fraction set up, I'm taking this negative 2 and I'm plugging it in for every x. So, it's going to be negative 2 cubed minus 5 times negative 2 divided by 
3 times negative 2 plus 2. And now it is about being able to work PEMDAS. Okay, so negative 2 to the third power is negative 8. So this is negative 8. And then if I take negative 5 times negative 2, that's positive 10 on the top. On the bottom, if I take the 3 times negative 2, that's negative 6, and then plus 2. All right, so on the top, negative 8 and positive 10, that's positive 2. And negative 6 and positive 2 is negative 4. And now I have a fraction. Can I simplify that fraction? Well, yes, I can, because both those numbers, 2 goes into both of those numbers. 2 goes into 2 one time, and 2 goes into negative 4 negative 2 times. And this is your final simplified answer. So notice again, as you look at these two examples here, when I'm substituting a number in, when I'm substituting a number in, I get a number as an answer. When I don't substitute a number in, I have some variables in there. Okay, so you should be able now to complete page three of your 6-6 six, six, day two, which is all division problems.